Tracy, welcome to the podcast. I am so happy to have you here today on Brushwork. And you reached out to me, which was the first artist to reach out to me for my little submission. And I was very excited. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I feel like you have a really interesting story behind your work. And as someone who has come back to their creativity after a really long hiatus, that's really powerful and kind of inspiring. Not kind of, it's very absolutely inspiring. And I feel like there are a lot of artists out there who aren't, who are, who are shy about coming back, who are, you know, they might call themselves an artist at heart and you, the, you, you took the leap and you came back to it. And I just, I want to talk about that creative journey of yours. Sure. Sure. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's been a long windy road. Um, Mm -hmm. So when I, I knew when I was in high school that I wanted to be an artist and, you know, I took all the art prep courses over the summer. I took courses at the Art Institute and Museum of Fine Arts School in Boston. And, and I was planning to go to Mass uh, College of Art. And when I graduated and I actually went there, um, I was just shell shocked. I was I was very immature, um, yeah. not very worldly. I was seeing people that, you know, I was, I grew up in a fairly conservative dressed and decorated house and people were just kind of, you know, all expressions in, at school. And it just kind of like made me question what an artist looks like. And I felt at the time very intimidated. I felt like, geez, I don't look like that. So maybe I'm not an artist, you know? And mm-hmm. so it didn't occur to me at that young age that artists can look like anything, you know, there's anything and everything. Um, and there's all different kinds of artists. But, you know, being so young, I just thought, hmm, and, and I just didn't have the self-confidence. So I dropped out. And um, I ultimately ended up going to hairdressing school. My sister was a hairdresser. And I thought, oh, really? that's a creative thing, yeah. you know, so but I thought, that's a safe choice. So <laughs> I did that. And I actually did that for many, many years, worked full time great profession, met lots of wonderful people. I actually still do it one, um, two afternoons um, a week, um, a month and uh, at a hair salon, um, just because I have a handful of clients for years and years. It's but great. It was a great, uh, yeah, a great creative well, like, One of my favorite things to do is updos because it was just so like sculpture and it just, mm-hmm. it, it was just wonderful. And so I had a big bridal clientele and the I it just after doing it so many years I felt like I um you know once you get very busy you're behind your chair and you don't move you you, you your arms move but you don't you it's almost like, I hate to say it but it's almost like you're chained to your chair and you just have the next and like I love the social and the creativity of it but I just felt like I needed to move so um in between there I had uh, my husband and I had our daughter and while she was very little, um, a friend of mine had a dog walking business and she said to me, go come work for me. And I said, oh, you know, my daughter's still young. You know, when she goes to kindergarten, I'll, I'll come work for you. And um, she went to kindergarten and I took on a few dogs, really liked it, love, love animals, love dogs, love walking. And still had one night at the salon. And during all this time, I also kept my hand and I always made things. I, I did a lot of sewing. I made handbags. I made, I reposted things for people. I made clothes, um, did a little bit of painting, not a whole lot. Went through a whole phase where a friend and I painted, uh, refinished furniture, made it real funky. Fun. And, um, neat. That was, it was very fun. Very fun. Uh, my house started collecting all this furniture and it just was like, oh, I have nowhere to put it all. So um, that kind of thing. <laughs> but it was fun. Um, so I was, so then after so many years, I um, had my own dog business and which I still have today. And I walk up to about 10 dogs a day. Can't believe it. Um, wow. And when my daughter finally, uh, I, it's a lot, it's a lot, but I worked up to it. And uh, I'm actually feeling like I'm getting too old to do 10. I'm trying to cut back a little bit. So we'll see how that works. <laughs> it's hard on the joints, you know, but it's a great, it's a great job. Dogs are always happy to see you. You know, the weather can be a little bit, but um, the walking's great. I just dress or whatever. Um, but when my daughter finally graduated and wanted to go off to college, I said, this is it. I have, it always kind of 
nagged at me like, um, you know, you have to get back to this art because I always knew from mm-hmm. a young child that I was an artist. I always made art. And um, and actually, it, in this, before I got married, I did go back to college. Um, I went to UMass Boston and I was an art and English major. They had a very small art department and it was wonderful, but it was just very small. Mm-hmm. And I think that if I stayed at Mass Art, I would have got much broader education. But, you know, things happen for a reason. So um, anyway, so I just kind of dove into it. And I try to, I have very artsy friends and they do it more just kind of casually, playfully, you know, not for business or anything. But I decided at one point, you know, I really want to make a go at this. So um, started taking business courses, art business courses, and met other artists and um, just kept making my work, putting it out there, really scary, felt really like, oh, I don't know, you know. And I took, kept taking art courses and um, yeah, just constant, constant. And then, then I took a very big course called CBP by Nicholas Wilton. Oh, I and don't know it. That's, it's a great course. It's a design. Um, it's for artists of all types. And it's basically, um, it just strengthens your design uh, value, um, composition, everything. It's just, it's a wonderful course. And I actually took it. The, the joke is that you, you people never take it once. I actually took it three times. Three times. Um, because there's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, a, it's so intense. It's a three-month course, and it has all this content in it. I should be like, a, I, I'm, I'm not a salesman. You should be an affiliate. It, it, <laughs> I, all right, seriously. I did get so much out of it. And I was, I, through that, it has a wonderful Facebook group. I met so many artists. And then, so now I'm just part of this wonderful artist community that we all support each other. And um, yeah, so it's, it's been quite a journey. And wow, I can, I can see, I've taken a few art business courses now and I can see they, in the business courses, they always said slow growth is good growth. And that I can see that that's exactly the trajectory of my art career. You know, my so gosh. still in that path, still growing. My, so, I feel yeah. like that moment going way back to the beginning your that moment when you go you like apply to art school and you get in magic and then you show up that first day and then you're overwhelmed by all the different kinds of artists and people and creatives there who are like you know a couple years older than you or whatever and being intimidated I feel like I felt that the first day when I went to art school I was just like oh no (laughs) I am way in over my head and I I do feel like that's probably why a lot of people don't continue because in my school year one, it was like 150 students. And by my graduating class, there was 30 people left. And like that sort of like intensity, like it's, I think it's really common. Of course, I went to college a decade ago, so it's might be different at this point, but it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that sort of like comparison that just hits you right away you haven't even had your first class and you see these people and you, you see them making stuff and it's just like oh it's yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot sure, sure is. absolutely right? yeah but I'm glad that you yes. I'm glad that you went back to it and I also think it's interesting a lot of artists who take breaks quote-unquote are still kind of making art the entire time that they don't call yes. themselves artists <laughs> And yeah, you went, I know. <laughs> you went through, you know, doing the hairstyling, hair art. You might even say you did the furniture. Yeah. You made, you made bags. You made all sorts of things. That's you're still tuning that creative self, which is so cool. And even if sure. you're not calling it art, it's I think recognizing that when you when someone is thinking about their past and whether or not they want to come back to it, that is quite powerful and very good to see and <laughs> it's it does lead you into the kind of artist you are today and you're an entrepreneur you have all these businesses my gosh this is really cool <laughs> I do I do <laughs> totally I feel like my head spins a little bit on it but <laughs> right you and I are of the same cloth every time someone tells me about some sort of like creative endeavor they're doing I'm just like oh let's monetize it <laughs> like, <laughs> so this true. would be so, so cool <laughs> They all, they all inform each other, you know, like I know that mm-hmm. being outside walking with my dogs, like I, I'm, I love nature and I'm just mm-hmm. so inspired by everything I see outside and that goes back into my art. Yeah. What was it particularly about your daughter graduating high school that really made you want to pick up the paintbrush again? I think that um, 
well, she was a film major and so she was very artsy as well and but I it, think that it's almost like you know you're uh, seeing through her eyes you know just that excitement and hope of just you know going for it and doing your creative thing and I thought you know why not why why shouldn't I go for it you know you know I mean it's um it felt like it was an unfinished thing that mm. I hadn't truly developed. You know, I had started it, but I never truly developed it. Yeah. And what I remember when I was young and I was in high school, people would say things to me all the time, like, oh my gosh, you're so talented. And, you know, it, it was wonderful to hear and supportive, but it also confused me because I felt like, well, I haven't really done much yet. <laughs> you know? So I almost felt like I hadn't learned it yet, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but it kind of put pressure on me, but it was confusing. And so something felt unfinished that I felt like I really need to explore this because I feel, I felt, and I still feel like I have a lot of creative energy from a very young child. I saw things, um, I had a very, I, I don't know. I just, I, I felt like I was an artist from a very young age. Um, used to sit at my grandparents uh, when I visited them and just, give me a tray table and my art supplies and I'm just, I'm there quietly, you know, <laughs> coloring or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. making up stories and just, you know, all kinds of stuff. But um, that I never doubted. That was always who, a part of who I was. So, um, but it just felt unfinished. So I just felt like the timing was right for me to delve back into it. Yeah. And, yeah. And put, and put it there. Yeah. I, I wonder if you, one thing I think about fairly often is how the people who live with us affect how we create and having like sometimes literally the physical space to make art. And, yes. you know, when you have one less person in your household, cause they're off to college starting their lives, <laughs> it, um, it, it changes the pattern of the household and it changes the way things flow. And that makes a difference. And I know For some, sure young mothers uh, I have a couple of friends who have like three-year-olds and four-year-olds and they are like every minute they can they're going to the studio but that's not very many minutes in the day (laughs) they're making it work but it's it's tough and it's it's interesting it's not like your daughter ever prohibited you from making art it was just like the timing wasn't right for your creative self and I think that's yeah yeah yeah, that that matters I felt that for sure Mm -hmm. and I think part of it was that you know it was really hard for you know having just one child you know they they say it's always hard when they go off to college you know no (laughs) no matter how many people have but having just one I definitely felt you know like grieving you know it was very sad and hard to have my little girl go off and move out and yeah um and I needed something to fill that space that was positive and productive and I did not want to put my feelings onto my daughter I didn't want her to feel bad like oh what's mom gonna do now and, you know I <laughs> yeah. just said no I'm not this you know something positive and you know because it's important to be a good role model too for her so oh absolutely yeah. I mean she became a filmmaker how cool is that <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely absolutely very, very <laughs> cool very cool when you when you look back onto how how many years how many years did you take your quote unquote break from artwork? Hmm. I mean, oh, so I graduated in ninety six. So I did very. I mean, I did do you know, like I said, the sewing and the furniture and all that kind of. Um, and I was so into crafting and stuff like that. But painting, oh my gosh, many many years. So like almost two decades. Oh gosh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's a long time. Absolutely. Long time. When you when you yes. look back onto your your journey, is there anything you would have changed regarding your your creativity? Like, do you think you would have gone back to your painting sooner? Do you think you would have done something differently? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I, sometimes when I think that for a while, I was real hung up that I had wished I had stayed at Mass Art and was kind of kind of feeling like just being hard on myself but I thought you know what no this is this is a much 
because I felt like I didn't get the broad education I should have, but I actually right. did get it through life, right? Through yeah, living. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the painting part just came when it came and the time was right. So I didn't have moments like when my daughter was growing up, like, oh, I wish I could paint right now. Um, and then I felt bad about it. I was always into doing something. But then when mm. she went off, it just felt very strongly in me. I need to do this now. This is the time. So, yeah, it was all everything just kind of fell into place. I find it really comforting that the art will always return to you whenever you're ready. And if you feel burned out or you feel like you need a, a moment away from the creative act, you it it will come back. Like there's no there's no escaping it. Let's be real. Like it, it will find you sure. again. <laughs> Absolutely. Always. And it Always. feels good. Um yes. your work is so bright and so colorful and I really like it. For people who have never seen your work and maybe they're only seeing the picture of the pears behind you, can you describe what oh. it is that you make? I guess I'd like to think of it as just very uplifting, contemporary, nature inspired, I, although I do figure it out as well, um, works that just, um, I like to think that there's a lot of joy in them and a lot of people have said to me that they feel a lot of joy in it. Um, and whimsy. Um, I like things that are a bit quirky. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm such a perfectionist. So for me to, I actually gravitate towards things that are off a little bit um, because they're more real, they're more genuine. And I just, I just, there's a warm spot in me for those things. So I try to put that in my art and resist that perfectionism um, as much as I can. And yeah. So I love that. That's pretty I... much it. I make a really abstracted but very geometric paintings and there's a lot of perfectionism that goes in it but every once in a while I will mess up a line just to give it something <laughs> human <laughs> and I, I do awesome. love imperfection in 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 painting that can be extremely figurative and extremely precise and it's it's quite fun can you talk tell me about your yeah. color palette what what colors are you drawn to what sort of things sure. Um, you know, it's so funny. I was just thinking this today, how you look at so many different artists and they all have their palettes that they t generally tend to stick to. And I guess I'm one of those people as well. Um, I definitely love bright colors, although I do mix a lot and I like blues and greens and teals. I think those are probably my favorites. Um, my single favorite color is oranges. I love orange. And a lot of times that appears in my work and I do love, um, you know, yellows, um, more towards golden yellows. Um, so yeah, and I try to, I try to use a limited palette a lot of the times, mostly because of my ADD and I get too overwhelmed if there's too many colors staring at me. Oh, yeah. So it's just, <laughs> I think it plays, or, plays nicer on the canvas if you can just limit it and, uh, you know, mix within. So it's totally true. I yeah. find that if I put too many colors on my palette, they just start to infect each other. And then I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> Rabbit hole. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Keep <You're>, it simple. <laughs> right? Yeah. Your paintings. <laughs> I, I think I've said this before to you in, in comments on Instagram or something like that. But your your paintings hold a lot of happiness. And you've talked about the joyfulness and the lightness in, in our conversation so far. Can you tell me more about what draws you to these motifs? Sure. Um, well, I think in general, I I have sort of a, a childlike way of looking at the world and um, I'm a pretty hopeful person. Um, and I also, my husband is disabled and he was an executive chef for many years, extremely creative. Oh. And he is... Um, yeah, so he makes me wonderful dinners every night. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's been it's been quite a journey. The last ten years have been rather difficult. He has quite a serious illness. Um, he's diabetic and he's had kidney disease, so he is on dialysis. Um, he did get a kidney a few years ago, and it was it was a rough year. We he went through a lot of infections. We almost lost him a few times. Oh. Um, ultimately, he failed, and he is back on dialysis now. So. I think, you know, all of that has truly, um, for sure, informed my work because when you live so close to life and death, it it just 
you can't help but just appreciate the smallest, just and be grateful for the smallest joys in life, you know. And and I I'm a person that I seek that out. I seek out joy every day. Um, I was just walking a dog the other day in the park, and I noticed there was a, a man with his um, lab, and he had him off leash, and he was running around in puddles in, in the park, and he, he just was the happiest dog. That, like there was nothing more happy than in that moment jumping in puddles. It was so evident in this dog's face, <laughs> and I just watched him in delight. Just like this is this is what life's about. Just these moments of just being present and just noticing because it's so easy we're bombarded with so many things today right and Mm -hmm. the news and the of the world and you know that I think it's easy for goodness to get sort of tuned out or among the noise of everything so um I feel like I just have always had a strong feeling that I wanted to put out joy into the world and my work in whatever small way I can and you know hopefully it's um it's you know I'm not I'm not changing the world but in my own small way I'm making a difference you know so and and that does change the world when you think about it because you know if if we can create a chain of people doing this it certainly makes a difference I think it's very easy to think about hard things and let them feel more important than joyful things and it's Absolutely. it's easy to forget and honor those joyful things. I mean, what's more pure than a dog playing in a puddle? Come on. Like, <laughs> it's so heavy. <laughs> um, and, it's, and it's not like we're ignoring the hard things because we're not, but to to be able to paint about the joyful things, like a bowl full of perfectly ripe pears <laughs> and yeah. on, on, on a checkered. I just love this painting behind you. It's so happy. And it's oh, so like stylized. It's great. <laughs> And um, <laughs> it's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta balance it. And creativity is such a good outlet for that balance. And you, you say yes. you're not making a difference, but I think having a piece of art like yours in a in a room changes the room, and it changes how it feels to be in it, and it changes changes when you look at that piece. You're not. It, it's a it's a reminder of the good things, and it's a reminder of like the peak of summertime or whenever. Paris come out. I think actually they're winter, whatever. And, <laughs> and it's just, it's nice. It's, it's, it's nice to have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I love that. It's a reminder because it's yeah. easy to forget. It's totally. so easy. It's Doesn't so easy. It. My yeah. gosh. Don't need to be doom scrolling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True. This painting behind me, I have a black and white version. It's, it's different than this one, but it's pairs in a bowl and they're jumping. And I, the title just came to me when I was painting it. It's just, I, it said, what pairs do when they're alone. And I just, you know, they're being naughty or whatever, they're jumping around in the bowl. But I just thought, you know, I, I look at the world like just like playful, you know, because the world's so serious. And, you know, it's just, I can be very serious at times myself. And maybe it's a reminder for myself as well to just, you know, loosen up and play. And that's one thing my art affords me also, you know, being a caretaker for my husband is, you know, it's an outlet for me to not only cope but just to um yeah just to express myself and just play and have fun how do you choose what's going to be next on your easel um you know sometimes I choose it lots of times it chooses me and I don't mean to sound pretentious saying that I tell me more I (laughs) (laughs) I just get sort of obsessed with a with something in my head I get an image that comes up and it's just like I don't know what this is but I've got to I've got to do it I've got to something um and a lot of times and I get my inspirations from everything from I mean everything but a lot of times when I hear people say oh don't look on Instagram don't look on Pinterest or whatever and you know what I find I get so much inspiration from other artists and I don't mean to say at all that I copy them it's just that I get a flash of something and then it takes off in a direction and I have to go with it. So, yeah. I, I really think Instagram profound. and Pinterest is perfect for inspiration. <laughs> and I disagree with people who say, right. don't go there. I'm like, no, you should go there. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, totally. You have a really cool, I'm looking at your studio now. You've got a great little studio here at home. Or maybe it just seems little because mm-hmm. the wall is close, but it is. Oh. 
Okay, yeah. great. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll show you the whole thing, but it's kind of messy. I'll turn you around so you can see my all over here. Oh, wow. Oh, we've got some great shelves. Yeah. Look at those. Oh, I love those in my books. And yeah, it's tiny. It's t I won't show the other side because it's a mess. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, no, I'll, I'll show you a peek over. It might yes. be the light. Show me the mess. See, this is a reality. This is what real studios look like. It's just, they're like stacks. I mean, look at my, yeah, like. <laughs> We're all the same. <laughs> yes, right, 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 right. I know, right? Let's get real. Forget the Instagram <laughs> shots. This is real, <laughs> real deal. <laughs> when you um, decided to have your studio at home and you had you cleared out the space, what was like the most important things you were thinking about for making like a really great space? Yeah. So when I was thinking of this space, and this was an office, and so a friend of mine said. I was thinking about what I wanted my studio to look like. And she said, draw it on a piece of paper. And oh, she's, she's not an artist, but she's very creative. And I said, oh, what a great idea. So I did. And I said, you know, I was thinking if I could, uh, and I'm, I'm a very, um, I should say, I'm a very bad trash picker. Um, I have no shame in taking <laughs> things out of trash that I think would be useful in some way. Um, AKA, let me grab this. because We call it upcycling. Yes, right? This is a cupcake stand. Cute. And I just put my paint in there. But, you know, I mean, that's more sort of, it's functional, but it's more fun. Um, but when I was writing out, doing this picture, I was thinking, well, you know, if I could find this, that, or in the trash, right? And not that I don't like to buy things I do, but I just thought things would get a mess in my studio, right? So I thought secondhand things would be better. And my friend said, no, don't think about, things you can get think about the things you want mm -hmm. so I said oh okay so I said all right so I just got real practical and I just said okay I want shelves that I can have ongoing art you know to inspire me hanging that I have all these shelves over here for my paints and my books and inks and you know brushes and pens and then um I did get a piece out of the trash that <laughs> it's great for all mediums and um kind of like whatnot whatever goes over there and then I bought another piece. It's like an Ikea, um, those square. So that that's great for smaller canvases, right? I can kind Love of it. tuck them all in there. So mm -hmm. it works. Uh, yeah, so I just make it work. But I'm finding, though, that it is sort of kind of the walls are coming in on me a little bit. So um, that's the tough part, right? Just trying to find storage for um, paintings and whatnot. I do have a little room downstairs. It's my sewing room that's... Um, off of my living room and I do have paintings down there so just to help out give me some more space and my daughter's room so one day I'm going to take over my daughter's room but not quite yet because you know she's still young you just you never know you know with the economy and hopefully, hopefully not but you never know so oh um, I absolutely moved back in with my mom for several months after college and it was great <laughs> it was kind of fun actually oh, being an yeah. adult <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely and the yeah. art creep from like how many paintings you produce versus ones you can get out the door and then they like just sort of taking over your house is so real. It's like, and it's also yeah. fun because you're like, look how colorful my house is now. But also it's like, oh, yeah. I should sell one of these maybe. I, who knows? Yes. <laughs> I started to hang them around my house. And at first I thought that's kind of like, you know, I don't know, kind of, uh, kind of an ego thing like I don't know should I have my own paintings hanging up in my house I'm like yes I should why not right they make me absolutely. happy absolutely so you know when I put them up for sale and the, there are a few that are my favorites that I keep but you know the other ones sell I'll rotate put some new ones up so yeah how do you primarily sell your artwork let's see so generally I sell on my website mm -hmm. um I also sell on Cherish it's a site called Cherish oh it's I don't know it. what is it Oh, it's a it's a site for artists, but it's also they sell, I believe, vintage things and used furniture and stuff like that. Um, wish I knew about that years ago, but um, but I do sell on that as well. And it's a great site um, because it's they have great SEOs, so they really show your stuff in a lot of places. I was actually on Pinterest the other day, and all of a sudden I was like, "Oh, that's my painting!" You know, that came up, and I was like, "That's great." That's really so, great. That was, that was <laughs> yeah. Um, and I do have things like I have an art fair coming up at a um, art association that I belong to here um, a few times over. 
Memorial Weekend and I sell prints and I sell lots of greeting cards. Um, I really try to have branches. So I have not just one income stream from paintings, which as I'm sure you know, it's not easy to sell just paintings. Um, and I have been in galleries in the past and I am seeking gallery representation always and uh, doing research. So yeah, a number Very of ways. nice. What is your favorite income stream then out of your art umbrella? Oh gosh. Um, you know, the, I mean, it's not the most lucrative, but it's to me, I just, I, I see the fun it brings in people's hearts and it's just uh, greeting cards. I just love yeah. making, it's so fun and it's, it's easy. Um, I make uh, G clay prints um, of pictures. I choose the ones and then I buy the, cardstock and I adhere them and I sign hand sign each one and I stamp the back and it's just people seem to really enjoy them and um, that just brings me a lot of pleasure and so yeah so I, I love doing the you know bringing those to fairs and I sell a lot of those you know holidays and um, just through my website and and in fact I sell them um, I use them as thank you cards for you know my dog clients or whoever really and they say, hey, I really like that. Do you sell those? <laughs> Actually, I do. So, yeah, we're not. it's a good thing. <laughs> I am an avid letter writer. I love writing letters to friends. I have a couple of pen pals. And so I'm always looking for art cards to send them and, like, fun, like, stationery. And so I, I understand oh, why well. your cards would sell. <laughs> I'm like, this yeah, would be a great yes, card. <laughs> yes, yes, Sure, sure, sure. And, and people that, that write. There's not too many anymore, but you know, the emails and the thing, right? So, but for snail mail, I mean, people get really excited. They're like, oh my God, I love cards because there's something, you know, in the digital age, it's just, it's, it's just warm and fuzzy and it just feels more, I don't know. It's romantic. Personal, you know, mm -hmm. it is. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever Absolutely. I get a new letter in my mailbox, I'm just like, today's the best day. I love this. Yes. <laughs> and then I yes. get all my pens out and my stickers and I like, oh, it's so much fun. Oh, it's the best great. hobby. Um, y'all, if absolutely. you want to, if you want a pen pal, you should send me a message. Cause I will absolutely send you a postcard or something. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, send oh, me a DM yeah. in the comments. Right. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I had a pen pal when I was young and it was one of the funnest things I ever had. She lived in, um, I don't know, somewhere in the middle East. I can't, mm -hmm. can't remember right now. Gosh, but it was so fascinating that, you know, and it was just, um, it was just seemed very exotic at the time, you know, and it was, and it was just a really, I, I used to get so excited when I got a letter in the mail. It's just, it, it connects you in a way that's deeper than an email uh, for just every reason. Yes. And it's, it's just so good. Absolutely. That's, that's yes. fun. I'm glad that's your favorite. That's a good one. <laughs> um, you have, how, how many years have you been doing art fairs? Oh gosh. Um, so when I got, so I've been back, doing art seriously now for like six years so mm -hmm. probably that long yeah yeah and I try to do you know a couple every year um as many as I can do you know juggling all the things I do um my goal is to eventually one day um you know I th I've given this a lot of thought um you know do I want to be a full-time artist and um I don't know. I don't know if I could sit in my studio all day and, you know, do bi the business side as well. It takes so long. Right. But I need to move. So I thought, well, maybe I could keep like five dogs <laughs> and, then, and then come home and then be in my studio the rest of the day. And I got my walking out and I got my dog fix out and, you know, just be out in the elements and, right. and then I'm ready to just be, you know. So, um, yeah. Being a full-time artist is, I think, a lot different than people think it's going to be at the beginning and it's your yes. your like apprehension is like oh I don't know if I want to paint all day long that's real that's like <laughs> it's many yes, many hours right? and like and then you know the business hours behind it you do this part-time I guess is what I'm gonna call it and I think a lot of people should cherish that like keeping it part-time is great doing your other things to keep the financial pressure off of your artwork and your creativity there's still some it's not like totally vacant but like sure. some of it off it's it's a relief and I think it helps you create more things with more joy and I sometimes I'm like oh I should probably pick up a part-time job because this is just too much pressure on the paintings and I've done that in the past and it's it's great yeah 
it's um it's a it's a fluid thing like going in and out of do I want full-time do I want part-time it's it's perfect um yes what would I I love that you do art fairs it's something I've personally never have done and but I do have a couple of friends who do it what do you think makes a really successful art fair so it's like the end of the weekend you're looking back what makes it successful so I did an art fair once where this woman came up to me and she said I, you know, I forget what she did. It was so long ago. And she, but she was a really interesting person. And she said, you know how to sell your work? You need to tell a story. And I looked at her like, what? <laughs> you know, she said, bring the, bring the buyer into your painting. You know, um, ask them about their home. You know, where would they put such a painting? Um, what's their favorite colors, what colors are in their home, you know, and sort of connect the buyer to your work. And I just loved that. I thought, oh, that makes it so personal, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, I have tried it. It it does work. Um, For me, um, I'm, I'm getting better. I, gosh, it's taken a long time. I'm getting better. I'm, I'm quite an introvert. I love people. I can be very social, but I do need my alone time. And I can be kind of shy at first when I meet people, especially in a, like an art fair. So it's very hard for me to put myself out there and sell. Um, I'm not a natural salesperson. So I really appreciated that advice that she gave me. And, you know, slowly, gently you know, dip my toe in it and just kind of venture out and say, you know, I don't know. I just try to think of um, a way to connect with somebody Um you know, as they're walking by, you know, you always smile, but sometimes there's just a small comment you can say that will draw them in it where they were just going to keep walking. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, from there, I think too, from taking some art business courses, I got some good information from that. And, and actually one person that I, that I remember now, she said, um, if you're a particularly shy person like myself, I can be, um, take on a persona. You know, just think of somebody you admire and sort of pretend for that moment that you're that person. Take on their confidence. And, you know, I, I have tried it and it does work. It sounds silly, who do you channel? Really Wait, work. no. Who do you bring in? Who's your person? Who do I bring in? I think, um, so I had an art coach once. Uh, her name is Miriam Shulman. She, wonderful coach. And she was very assertive. And so I thought, oh, gosh, if I could channel some of that energy. So I, I took on hers and, um, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great advice. I thought wonderful. That's excellent advice. Yeah. Sometimes you, you have to have a little bit of showmanship to you and like pretend it's like acting in a way you're not, not totally, but it's like becoming, yeah, it's, I do the, I do the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really (laughs) good. (laughs) What is a, what does a typical studio day look like for you? Okay, so let's see. Um, my dog usually wakes me up very early. <laughs> much Love early it. that I want to get up. Five thirty, <laughs> six. Um, and then usually, um, you know, I potter a little bit in the morning and have breakfast and coffee, and and then sometimes I do some business stuff in the morning, or I'll be getting prints or cards ready for art fairs. Um, lots of times I do business stuff early because my brain is a little sharper, so it's easier for me to do that then. Um, and then I start working dogs about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I usually um, walk till about two or three in the afternoon, probably closer to two. Um, and then I come home and I walk my dogs <laughs> again. And then I come up to my studio. So I'm usually in my studio from about 2, 30, 3 o'clock. And then I usually paint most days, most most five, six days a week for Mid afternoon until supper time, and um, you'd be surprised what you can get done in just you know two three hours a day. It's amazing, and it's just enough. You know, it's it's just enough because um, you know after I've walked all day, I'm sort of a um, little bit tired, but not too tired. You know, and so it's kind of good. I'm loose and you know ready to just kind of play and uh, nothing too much. And lots of times I listen to podcasts or music. Or sometimes I paint online with friends. Um, and yeah, so, and usually by supper, after supper, I'm just toast. That's it for the day. (laughs) So I don't get much done after that, (laughs) but I'm an early riser. (laughs) 
Classic. I, I'm very similar to you. I can paint for about three hour sections and then I need to be done either for the day or I need yeah. to take a long break in between. And I think it's very wise of you to do your art business work in the mornings and doing all your emailing, your admin work, your website, whatever it is. That's it. It's good. It's, it's a good system. <laughs> I know. And it just kind of happened because I just I just felt sharper then. So I just automatically did it. And I thought, Jesus works. Yeah. It's good. Listeners. Yeah. Listeners, if you are the kind of person who like, if you're wondering how to rearrange your schedule to like benefit your physically making something time, think about when you are sharpest. Cause some people are, you know how some people are like, we're morning people. (laughs) And you're like, I don't understand what that means. Um, you think about when you have the most energy and most mental attention and, and prioritize, like maybe you give that to the hardest tasks for you. And maybe that's the admin work and maybe you can give it to the physical painting time or whatever craft you're, you've got. And that will, you'll, you'll be a lot happier in the end. Once you start assigning those moments of your day to certain things, yeah. it's, it's going to work out. Yes. For sure. And I do find that Wednesdays are a particularly busy uh, day for me with dogs. And I end up having the most dogs that walk on that day. And so for that day, I might be kind of tired in the studio. And sometimes I do have to stop a little short before supper because, you know, I find that when I'm too tired, I'm just not happy with my work. I'm just, you know, and nothing I do is going to is going to work because I just don't have the energy to you know, do what I want to do. So it's a frustrating thing. And the best thing I can do is just stop, right? So it's taken me a while to kind of realize that and then allow myself to do it. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's been really special. Yeah. Respecting when Instead you just stop. Mm-hmm. Oh, so true. Absolutely. <laughs> You've, talked hard to- hard to be hard. <laughs> You've talked today about a couple of different classes you've taken and I'm going to put links to them in the show notes and stuff like that. But um, one thing that you and I have in common is that we've both went to the Chateau Orcabeau art residency in France. Uh, we were one month yes. apart from each other, which is very fun. Yes. And yes, yes. I, it was this the first residency you had ever been to? Yes, it was. I think, in fact, I think you, I think you left and then I just came like you yeah, left like the I, next I, day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and that's, that's how I found you. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, that was my first art, artist residency and never in my wildest dreams could I have seen that for me in my future. I just, yeah, that was amazing. Um, the most magical, wonderful, beautiful, Oh, I would highly recommend it to anybody. It was, it, did you, did you find it? I, I listened to your podcast on it and I, and I felt. So, you know, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was a little we had some challenging moments at times um, as well. Um, you know, when you have so many different personalities and age groups, you know, age ranges that, um, you know, they're, they're folks that want to stay up and party. And, you know, one thing that I don't know about where you stayed, I had a cottage so that was so lovely because it I could um leave. I could go back to my cottage when I just mm-hmm. wanted some space, you know. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh I don't know about you, the first three days there I had such horrible jet lag that I just kind of felt like in a fog. And I thought it was just me. And you know, here I am in my studio, I'm like, why can't I paint? What nothing's coming, what's happening? <laughs> and then I noticed like everybody else was having the same issues, you know, they were just like, Oh my god, I just feel out of it you know and by the third day it was like okay yeah I'm starting to come back you get into your groove jet lag is so real I definitely planned around the jet lag I was like I'm going to Paris three days early just for the jet lag <laughs> and I was able to plan that time but I was like there I I want to be able to like get going immediately when I got to the chateau and a lot of my cohort members also were feeling major jet lag effects and it's it's real it's real um, what did, what inspired you to apply to this? Because it's, oh. it's a big deal. Um, what, yeah. What convinced you? Exactly. So, um, a good friend of mine that I paint with, um, online, she had gone the year before and she just, uh, you know, she's very brave and, and I give her so much credit on her own. She just applied. And I, I think, she, I think she knew of people that have gone, but never really, no one close to her. So, you know, we were talking about it. And of course, she, when she was there, she got COVID. So she wasn't really able to make the most of it like everybody else. They had put her 
in a cottage with a few other women that had got COVID. And so they couldn't, you know, intermingle and whatnot. So, um, but she still loved it. There, she did get so much out of it. And it just, you know, we were talking and it just made me think, gosh, you know, could I do that? And she just encouraged me to apply. And I applied and I forgot about it. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll never get accepted, you know? <laughs> and of course I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, you know? And it, it was, it was quite something to, um, as a leap of faith and a, and a growth period to, you know, fly alone and to a strange country. I've never been to Europe and um, yeah, it was, it was amazing, but you know what? It, it gave me so much, so much confidence in myself, right? Now that I can, I've done it and um, I did, I got so much out of it. It was, it was so wonderful just, just to be able to be in a studio because my studio was in the stables, which was um, for those that don't know, it was a, um, stable that was done over into studios and I had all this wall space so I thought when I go there I'm going to paint really big because other than this big painting you see behind me I, I painted actually bigger than that because I don't have the wall space to paint like that in this tiny right. room so and when I do I can just do one at a time on my easel so I had four large canvas just you know uh, raw canvas just up on the walls and it was just it was overwhelming at first but then it was just like such freedom and just it was wonderful you know just yeah you get to stretch your wings that's so nice (laughs) having yeah having a giant studio space is so good and it, it feels it's it's very freeing to be able to go to a place where your only job is to make art and everything else is taken care of for you and you have no responsibility. You don't have any dogs to walk. You don't have any children to take care of. You don't have any, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, it's really sacred in a way, which is really cool. And I, I love that you got to go. That's, that's really cool. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. I actually did reapply. So we'll see for next year. Oh, you want to go back? Oh, I absolutely want to go back too, but I'm like, I should wait another year or so. Maybe, maybe two more years. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> You're gonna fly again, and I think that's really cool. What else is your like future dreams for your art career? Like any big hopes? You said you want to get gallery representation. I think you can do it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yes, I am actually. Um, I did teach um, a few classes, and I'd like to do more of that. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing that at um, the art association that I belong to. And, you know, it's so, the students, you know, give you so much information back, you know, and you learn so much from them. And I just love the, um, you know, back and forth. And so that's definitely on the table. Um, I would love to do another residency. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a wonderful, um, to be around all those other artists and just, you know, to see people that were just uh, so immersed in their work. And so, uh, there were so many different artists that when I went that, you know, there was a woman who uh, recycled clothing and she made sculpture out of it and oh, cool. saved landfills. And it was just, you know, she's very big on um, the environment and it was just fascinating to um, see what she does. And um, there was another woman who did a lot of work with rope and, these things about things that you just sort of, sort of kind of see, make you see things in a different way that you don't normally see like that on a day-to-day basis. It was just very eye-opening and interesting. Um, so more residencies in the future. Yes, please. And um, yeah, just art traveling. I'd like to just um, just do some traveling and go to different galleries and, um, you know, as I research um, different places to put my work and try to find places that it's a good fit. Um and yeah, Did I love your question. <laughs> absolutely. I love traveling for art. I love going somewhere for a weekend and just being like, we're only going to go to do art things, art museums, art galleries, art classes. I'm going to go meet up with art people that I may have met over the internet. <laughs> and, and it's quite fun. <laughs> would highly recommend. Cool. What's coming up next for you in the short term? Yes, yes. Um, so I'm going to be at the North River Art Society Festival of the Arts Memorial Day weekend. I will be there on Saturday afternoon. I'm going to be in a segment of it called Art in the Barn. And it is um, 
all local artists get to showcase their work and it's for sale. I'll be selling prints and originals. Um, and it's a lot of fun. They have all kinds of vendors and uh, a puppet parade that was handmade. Um, all the puppets, it's fascinating. It's so fun. It's um, so cute. And it's just, it's adorable. There's entertainment and it's just, it's just, it's a fun, fun weekend thing to do just for families, for whoever, you know, art lovers. Um, so I will be there. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be perfect. All right. My very last question for you today is circling way back around to the beginning of our discussion. What is some advice you would give to someone who is returning to their art practice after a, like at least 10 year hiatus? Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, I would say just do it. If you feel in your soul that this is something you want to do, um, don't worry about um, being afraid that you don't have style yet. Um, don't be intimidated by other artists, just do it and keep doing it. And the more you do it, you'll see your style for one thing. Um, but yeah, it's, you're not going to know what you're capable of until you just pursue it. And I think you're going to find that, um, it gives back so much, so much, you know, that it's just so satisfying. So yeah, don't let, don't let other people stop you or feel intimidated. Because, you know, you think you you can't do this or you're not like that. Just you're you. Just be you. People love that. People love genuine, authentic you. That's great advice. That's Tracy, great. where can people find you online? Oh, you can find me at tracyallegroart.com. That's my website. And I'm on Instagram at tracyallegroart. Perfect. Thank you so much for being on Brushwork today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. I really appreciate this. This was fun.